and make it look like a proper skin. So to do that, we don't need to use any of this diffuse glossy mix shader stuff. So what, what you've created over here, let's just get rid of it. We're going to be using a much more realistic shader, which is called the principal shader. So press Shift A, Shader, Principal, BSDF. Then all you need to do is connect the color of your skin texture into the base color over here, and then connect that to the surface. So now you have a much more realistic looking surface for your character. And then what you want to do is you want to plug in the bump of your character into the normal so that you can see start to see the bump map being applied to your skin. And now to make the skin look like proper skin, we need to use subsurface scattering. So this, that's how the skin generators work. We have light being reflected, refracted in such a way that the skin tends to have the kind of texture that it has. So I'm just going to increase this texture, increase this value of the subsurface quite a bit. And then the more you, higher you increase it, the more sort of milky jelly like that it tends to make the, the material. So I guess for our cases, we don't need to have a character with so much subsurface scattering. So I'm going to just turn this down to something like 0 0.002 to start off with. And then now it's time to see that it's looking like real skin. So maybe 0 0.004. I think that's looking much better. And the good thing about the principal shader is that it tends to render faster than using the normal subsurface scanner. Cool. So as you can see, now it starts to look like proper skin. So for the eyes, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, for the sake of this rendering, I'm going to just um, turn off this, uh, wait, actually, let's turn on the eyeball.l and turn off the eyeball placeholder. Same with uh, this one, so that we see the real eyes uh, that are being rendered. So if I look in solid view, uh, you can't see it. Now if you go to the second layer, you can see the two eyes. So these are the real eyeballs that will be rendered uh, in our final character model. So at the moment, it doesn't have a proper shader yet. So let's go ahead and add the shaders for our eyes. So for the uh, reflective bit, it's simply just going to be glass. Simple as that. It's just going to make our eyes look reflective. For the rest of it, so I'm just going to get rid of pupil and sclera. We'll just use the eyeball white. Uh, uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go into my solid view, uh, tab into edit mode, select all the vertices here. We luckily UV unwrapped this one earlier. We did U project from view earlier on to both eyeballs. So uh, we can just go ahead and add in a, a simple eye texture. So I'm just going to remove this image texture here. And I'm going to load in an eye texture. Let's go to google.com or any, any other image website and grab an image of uh, a simple eyeball texture. And if you don't have the background, just put it in Photoshop or GIMP uh, behind a white background and, and paint in some uh, red bits just to make it look uh, convincing like an eyeball. Okay, so now let's tap into edit mode. Let's now for the reflective bit of the eye, I want to go ahead and select the larger sphere. Is that the larger sphere? No. The larger sphere. Um, yes, that is the larger sphere, the one that is going out of the eye from the side. I just assign it the reflective bit and then hide it. Now select all of this one and then select this loop over here where the pupil will be. Oh, no, not really pupil, sorry. This is where the pupil will be. I'm going to go ahead and scale it down to make it fully black. Oh no, not so. Uh, let me just go backtrack a little. This one will be fully black. Like so. It's just, uh, there's two loops there, so I might just put around halfway so that the black layer so that the pupil part sort of ends halfway between these two loops okay um, then I'll select the larger loop so these two and then I'll move this one 
out towards oh should I select one more loop over here? Select these three loops. Or better yet, just select these two. Oops. Select these two and scale it out so that it intersects uh, these this area. Scale this down. Scale this up. So it's sort of like that. We'll hide this part here for now. Okay, so if you select all of that. Let's just have a look at what this looks like in material mode. You can't see it. In rendered mode. Okay, if I just make the glossy, the, this part transparent for now. The reflective bit transparent for now. Um, I will white. We're going to add in the image texture of the eye map. Oops. Yep, we can sort of see that, which is what we expect. So now let's go back into solid. Let me just do this again. So you project from view. Let's put this in place. Let me put material or put texture. Okay, so we see better what's going on. Put it in the correct place. Select the loops by alt right clicking and then scale them and position them so that the pupil fits the eyeball as expected. So if I look at it in rendered view now, you can see that our eyeball looks uh, proper. Cool, so now it's just simply a matter of making the eyeballs uh, look like eyeballs. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and um, instead of using Diffuse, I'm also going to use a, a principal shader and plug this into the base color um, and also uh, I'm going to make this into a bump map as well. So. Um, Let's go ahead and go to vector mapping and I'm oh no, sorry, let's go ahead and go to converter color ramp. Plug the color into the factor and plug this color into the normal. Which uh, sorry, not the normal. I'm gonna first off put it into the base color for now. Uh, just to see the mapping. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, go then into uh, vector bump, plug this into the height, then plug it into the normal. Oh, that's just like that's looking like too much bump. It's adding the bump in areas where we have these colors here, so I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a little, it's a little bit of a hack, but I'm just going to drag this out so that we don't see that the, any of the like, extra colors being affected. And it's just the middle of the eyeball, just the sclera part of the eyeball that's being affected. So let's just do that and there we go and I think for the most part that is okay so we can bring back the color into the base mesh and then it looks sort of like that and we also need to turn up the subsurface scattering on this one as well we can make this one look more subsurfy or more um, more jelly like than the skin Okay, something like that. 0.133 is okay. Um, and I think for that part of the eyes, that is good enough. So for the reflective bit, I'm going to change from transparent back to glass again. So that we have the outer coating. And then remove the transparent shader. But the problem with using just a plain glass shader is you get all these little noise and effects and things like that. So we actually found another way to create that sort of glassy effect around the eye, that sort of coating. Um, we're going to use a mix between 
a refraction shader and a glossy shader. Simply just going to go ahead and mix that up. Like so. So we can see there's much less noise now. And then we're going to go ahead and um, add in a layer weight. So input layer weight. So this sort of gives that sort of Fresnel effect. And just need to go ahead and put that Fresnel as the factor. What I also might do, actually, let's use facing. What I might also do is using a vector color ramp. Sorry, converter color ramp. Plug that in there. Something like that. Maybe mix the colors a bit. So color, mix RGB. Uh, we might use this to control the factor. So I might start with a dark black and maybe a grey and it's still making the eyes look a little bit dark we wanted to have a bright white eyes cartoony characters look more appealing with very bright looking eyes so let's go ahead and increase the color of this so to do that all we need to do is simply add in an input RGB node make it fully white and plug that into the color now actually what we want to do we want to actually multiply it so go to converter math and uh, multiply it. Same with this one. Let's say by two, that makes our eyes look white. If I go four, that makes our eyes look really white, but we don't want to do that. Just, uh, we want to keep it realistic. So let's go to one, now let's go to two. The eyes are now done. Okay, so I'm just setting up three lights over here. I just turned the world settings from gray to completely black. And for this lamp, I'm just going to make it, uh, I don't know, just a slight bluish tint. Very, very subtle. Okay, um, so let's just have a look at what that looks like. We'll look at the actual proper lighting setup later. Just want to showcase the skin texture that I've created, that's all. So just a very simple three-point light setup. All right, so here's our final result. Look how awesome that looks. I know it's a little bit noisy, uh, but this can obviously be fixed by, you know, increasing the samples and later on doing some other tweaks to the render settings, which we'll look at in a later video. But you can sort of see how our character looks like right now. And it's looking like a pretty awesome looking cartoony character, which can be used for a film or a game. So, you know, it's a pretty good achievement that we've made so far. Yeah, that's it. Your character is now complete. Well done if you've made it this far. In the next video, we will add clothes to our character which will help to give much more personality to our character and make our character look a lot more final than it currently is. Note that you can download the final model as well as the rest of this series from this link over here. Please like, share and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.